Hello and welcome to the Legend of Nobunaga. This week we are facing a rescue mission. The stage is the rescue at Kitanosho Castle. The story so far is that Nobunaga, after the attempted usurpation by Mitsuhide Akechi, has managed to regain control of at least the eastern part of his territory and is now being attacked on three sides by the Uesugi, the Hojo and the Mori and in this chapter we're going to face them all. First, we're facing Uesugi. We are off to rescue Katsuye Shibata and Toshie Maida, who are under siege at Kitanosho Castle. Our planning is done. Let us prepare for war. Sir! It is the winter of 1582, which would technically make it impossible for Nobunaga to go to their rescue, as I'll describe a little bit later. But let's see what's going on up at Kitanosho Castle. We've done our best, haven't we? From the day our lord was betrayed, we fought hard. <sighs> we've showed them the pride of the Oda clan. Yeah, but we've gone just about as far as we can go. Ah, how good it tastes. The last sip of water. <laughs> <laughs> Not having any water is hilarious. Now we must find what comfort we can in death. One of us must make it through enemy lines and avenge the death of our lord! Not too dissimilar from the story of Ketsuie I told many episodes back. What? Where he deliberately ran out of water to inspire his army. This is a blessing from the gods! Kanetsuku! We have been given this chance! We will avenge Lord Kenshin! Lord! So the enemy commander, Kagekatsu, is. Seems pretty really enthusiastic about fighting Nobunaga. Hold out a bit longer. You know it's gonna make his life a lot harder. Kage Katsu is the new daimyo of the Uesugi the clan. Let's start. He succeeded from Uesugi uh, Kenshin, who scouts, defeated in the past. This is what we face. And as he just said, he wants to take revenge for Kenshin's death. So we'll see if he does. Let's have a look at the stage. We shall win this battle if we defeat the enemy commander Kagekatsu Uesugi. Uesugi has taken the field. This stage is very Mr. linear. Mr. Katsuie and Toshie have holed up in Kitanosho Castle. Rescuing them is our first priority. And by that I mean there's only one route through the stage you can take. So there's uh, very few tactics as to your advance. We must rescue advance. Toshie and Katsuie. There is still a lot of work they need to do. They still haven't paid back the money I loaned them. Oh, Lord, get your money, it's Amalia. Time to deploy. So this is a rescue mission. We need to try and get Katsuye and Toshie out of Kitanashu Castle alive, the castle being in the top left-hand corner of the map. Um, so I decided to deploy cavalry in order to aid the speed of my rescue. The first time in many battles that I've actually been able to use Toshie and Katsuye, which is very welcome because they're some of the best units. The castle itself is just a, uh, a little wall, only one side has a gate. Not a very impressive castle. Kitanosho Castle was actually a very impressive place, built by Katsuye. I guess I'll um, talk about it once we get in there, but have a look at this condition. It says, beware of Kanetsugu Nae's mercenaries. Uh, I wasn't really sure what that meant. But uh, we'll find out soon enough. In fact, I can't even remember what it meant. It's going to be a surprise to me as well. <laughs> I played this stage a few days ago. I've already forgotten what the surprise was, which means it probably wasn't too surprising. Anyway, um, I had to go into the equipment screen and give Toshi and Katsuye some modern equipment because they still had the equipment from when I last saw them, which was many chapters back. So I re-equipped them. Here you can see I was considering sending Nobunaga backwards to look for items, but when I start the stage I will instead just send one of my units back so as not to waste too much time Impressive. in the rescue. Victory is as good as ours! Our council is at an end. You all know what you have to do. Now go! Sir! Lovely jovely, so let's go and rescue those guys. I believe once I complete this level they'll be back in my army for the remainder we of the game. Leave Katsuye and Toshie. To die in the north. Let's go. That's why I wanted to do this stage first, so I could use some of my best generals in the uh, in other stages of chapter 11. So you'll see here, I'm going to take Takatora and my horse archers, who I don't regard as being too important, 
and send them backwards to look for items as the main force advances. This stage was quite easy actually, but it's going to see me gradually working my way around the map and linking up Nobunaga with Katsuye and Toshie and then finally Our going Lord to attack alive? the Uesugi main camp. Not much to this stage at all, even though it was Our nine difficulty, so the game regarded it as being one of the hardest Ow. levels. But yes, personally I didn't really see why. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about uh, Kitanosho Castle. I was just about to go into talking about it. Uh, I said it was one of the greater castles, and I guess it was, but really it's only the Tenshu that was so great about it. The Tenshu in a Japanese castle is a, a central building, a large tower, which uh, comes up at the, the middle of the fortifications. And Kitanosho Castle had a Tenshu that was something like 9 or 10 stories tall, which meant it rivaled the Tenshu of Azuchi Castle which I was making a big deal about in the past as being Japan's greatest castle. I believe Azuchi was still the greatest castle in terms of total defences and total size. And in terms of its main tower, I believe Kitanosho may have beaten it, though I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, Kitanosho was built by Katsuye, so he's currently stuck inside his own castle. It was built as part of his campaign against the Uesugi. Um, I think he built it in the sort of mid-1570s, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yes, it would have been built as part of defences against the Uesugi, and now he's trapped inside them, so I guess it's working because it's stopping the Uesugi army advancing into Oda territory, but look at Suye, he's uh, going to have to struggle to get out alive. You'll need more than that to defeat us. Here in the castle I do a lot of fighting in the gateways, which is very useful because using gateways to channel the enemy makes them very weak in your troop skills, uh, as you can see here doing this cavalry charge, which unfortunately also took down Toshiye, <laughs> he'll be fine. You know, there was actually almost a battle at Kitanosho Castle sorry, in, uh, in 1583. I say it was at Kitanosho Castle, it was, it was nearby. Uh, the battle took place between the forces of Katsuie and the forces of Hideyoshi. Uh, and why would Katsuie be fighting Hideyoshi? Well, I guess I should explain. Let's go Were back a little bit in history and explain what exactly was going on after the death of Mitsuhide Akechi. Uh, last episode I was telling the story of how Mitsuhide was defeated and Hideyoshi came to be the hero of the Oda clan for defeating him. But what happened after that? Well, it was actually fairly violent and as with many clans who had the death of significant figures, there would be a war for succession. After the death of Akechi, uh, it was actually fairly civil at first. There was a series of councils known as the Kiyosu Councils, I believe, where Oda retainers needed to discuss who should succeed Nobunaga as head of the clan, and there were basically two legitimate options. One was Nobutaka, Nobunaga's remaining son. His immediate heir had died at the same time as he did, so the main option was already out the window, but Nobutaka, one of Nobunaga's other sons, was still available. The other option was a guy called Samboshi. Samboshi was the son of Nobunaga's legitimate heir, so not directly uh, a son of Nobunaga, Nobunaga's grandson, and was linked into the royal family because he was the heir of the heir. So they had the choice between sort of picking the brother of the heir or the son of the heir. And the retainers were divided on who it should be. Uh, Nobutaka was supported by Katsuie because Katsuie had always had a very close relationship with Nobutaka. Uh, where uh, Samboshi was, report was uh, supported sorry, by Hideyoshi, and this immediately began to sprout into conflicts uh, because Hideyoshi was very powerfully arguing in these councils that Samboshi should be the successor, and I believe he pretty much managed to convince a lot of the people there, particularly Nagihide Niwa, who's another influential Oda supporter. So it seemed that after these councils that Samboshi was going to be declared heir, but he never really was because uh, the people who were supporting Nobutaka didn't really accept the ruling of the council. They still wanted Nobutaka to be the successor, which meant essentially it came down to a situation where you need to have a war for succession just to decide the issue because the, uh, the political solution was so undecided. Coming away from the council, Katsuie was very suspicious about Hideyoshi um, for a number of reasons. Uh, the first 
was that he didn't know why Hideyoshi was supporting Sam Boshi, who like wasn't the obvious successor to Nobunaga because it wasn't a direct uh, one-step relation. And Katsuhiro thought Hideyoshi must be up to something by trying to get him as the successor. Secondly, he was suspicious of him basically because Hideyoshi represented the upstart generals of Oda. Uh, over the last 10 years in history, Tremble Oda had Nobunaga. become more and more reliant on young retainers and giving them more and more power, we more and more him. trust, whereas old retainers like Katsuye uh, were being sidelined in favour of the young retainers uh, such as Hideyoshi and Mitsuhide Akechi. So there was uh, a long-term resentment against characters like Hideyoshi which Katsuhige would have held just for basically taking away their importance within the clan structure. But I guess that wasn't so important in this case, that was more of a, a backburner style resentment. So perhaps all of these reasons for Katsuhige disliking Hideyoshi influenced his decision to basically plan a war for succession once the council seemed to fail in getting unanimous votes for a See, new successor to Nobunaga. And he was actually in a pretty good position to lead this Fear war of succession. He had command enemy. of an army which was pretty much equal in strength <laughs> to Hideyoshi's to army. Death. Which means it wasn't such a far-fetched plan that he could defeat him in battle and then make Nobutaka the undisputed Oda ruler and get rid of the rule of upstarts like Hideyoshi. But Hideyoshi would prove to be a very fine opponent and basically their plan would be doomed from the very beginning. We can see here in the stage, Nobunaga has linked up with Toshie and is about to link up with Katsuye. So I've managed to save them, pretty easy. I have a feeling that the difficulty rating of the stage might have been made based on the perceived difficulty of keeping Katsuye and Toshie alive in the castle uh, because they were being attacked by so many enemy units. But the fact that they came in waves rather than coming simultaneously basically meant it was fairly easy because you could just defeat them one by one with very little problem. Also they had, at least for the first uh, start of part of the stage, they had constant defense up bonuses which meant that even though, especially Toshio was taking heavy hits from the enemy, he didn't actually lose any troops. Attack! And now the final wave attacking the castle is actually met by Nobunaga instead of Katsuye, Katsuye who is able to uh, destroy him with ease. So let's talk about the War of Succession and how it leads up to the almost real-life Battle Nothing of Kitanosho Castle. Our march towards victory. The Katsuye had a number of problems in the war from the very beginning which would basically end up deciding the outcome of the war really before it even started. The first problem is, is what we're seeing here in the stage. That Katsuye was engaged with the Uesugi, not directly engaged in battle, but engaged in strategic no battle, mercy. where the armies were near enough each other that they couldn't ignore each other uh, and were waiting for an opportunity to, do, to engage. Uh, Uesugi particularly well. wanting to invade Oda territory to expand their power base towards A the capital. Fire. So Katsuye knew that he couldn't move his forces very far away from his province of Echizen, uh, otherwise it would just be invaded. So this was an immediate disadvantage for him, he had to be very careful about how he deployed his main army. The second big problem he had was that Toshie Maida did not support Katsuhie, uh, which Katsuhie was assuming he would, his battle companion, but Toshie actually ended up supporting Hideyoshi. Hideyoshi was very frank with Toshie, he basically told Toshie that he intended to usurp the Oda clan and Toshie uh, evidently thought that he was going to be able to do it. So he decided to, to side with Hideyoshi to be on the, the the ruling side of the conflict in the end as he saw it. So Katsuhie lost one of his main allies which weakened his force and weakened his political position within the, uh, within the clan set of retainers. The final and most important problem Katsuye had was actually his choice of successor Nobutaka. Uh, Nobutaka was not a particularly useful asset to him in this war. The object of the war was to make Nobutaka the leader of the Oda clan. So Nobutaka's personal forces were going to get involved. Nobutaka was based in Gifu Castle in Mino. However, 
these forces were a long way away from Katsuie's forces in Echizen, which meant uh, if the Katsuie side was to have the greatest chance of victory, they would have to somehow link up and then do battle with the Yoshi's forces. However, Nobutaka didn't seem to realize this, and this would cause a massive issue. In the winter of 1582, which is when this stage we're seeing now is supposed to take place, Hideyoshi was sending insults to Nobutaka's retainers and basically threatening him from outside Gifu Castle saying that he was going to kill him if he considered um, an uprising. Nobutaka apparently was pushed into uprising by these insults, uh, fearing that if he left the issue for too long, uh, his retainers or possibly himself would begin to be assassinated as Hideyoshi uh, became impetuous and wanted to settle the issue. So he decided to take to the battlefield in the winter of 1582. However, Echizen province, which is in, on the very northern edge of Oda territory, is very uh, snowy province as we're actually seeing in this, the stage here. To the extent that you can't actually go in or out of it during the winter, because all of the passes through the steep Fear hills and mountains that cut it off from enemy. central Japan are basically so snowed over that you can't move any significant force through them. Which meant the time me. Nobutaga had decided to begin his offensive was exactly the time that Katsuie could not help him. Katsuie's army was trapped in Echizen. This meant Nobutaka was on his own. And on his own, he was a very weak ruler, he didn't have many forces, and only a single castle as Hideyoshi controlled all of central Japan and had an enormous army, perhaps as large as a hundred thousand troops, which was almost unprecedented for the time. So Hideyoshi simply marched to Gifu that very winter, besieged it, and Nobutaka pretty quickly surrendered, realizing <laughs> his mistake that he would not be able to fight Hideyoshi in fact, and he was forced to commit suicide as part of his surrender which meant Katsuie had now lost the man he was trying to get into rulership of the Oda clan, which damaged his cause and it damaged the general strength of his alliance because he no longer had one of the warlords on his side and one of the uh, key castles that he was going to use. You can see here in the stage, uh, I, I tried to charge that Uwasuki samurai There's something I've never seen happened where uh, the all the sound effects make it sound like you've tri triggered a charge and the units move up into charge formation, but it doesn't work. So I think I discovered a minor glitch, possibly related to the fact that I was being hit, hit by my own arrows simultaneously. I don't know if that counts without your charge. Um, but I do think I've seen in other occasions the charge not being cancelled out, so I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, enough of that. You can see in this stage I've progressed through Time into these, this the hilly region on the, the east order. side of the map, and there are just Sort of enemy units the pestering me the whole way, never enough to defeat my entire force. They're always coming in sort of groups of one or two, and they're always easy to defeat. Strength, I... And I'm spending lots of time checking all these little nooks and crannies that there are on the map for items. And so earlier I found two items almost simultaneously, Fire. which I was very happy about. So what happened after the defeat of Nobutaka in the war? Well. Hideyoshi's force very quickly went on to Ise province, which is west of Uwari, southwest of Mino and Gifu, uh, where another Oda general had rose up in support lines. of Katsuie's side of the debate, basically rising up because when he noticed that Nobutaka had risen up, he decided that now was the time to play his cards, even though he realized it was a few even time to rise up because Katsuie was cut off. But he was kind of forced to rise up and Hideyoshi very quickly crushed his rebellion, so by the end of winter 1582, Katsuie's cause has been severely weakened. That guy who just said he was going to fall back was the uh, supposed Kanetsugu Noe, who I should beware of, beware of his mercenaries. And, uh, so I seem to have defeated him. But the fact that a little video came up saying that he's just falling back Press heavily the... suggested that he would be coming back onto the battlefield later, and we'll see if he does, and we'll see whether these so-called mercenaries that the, the game claims exist are worth worrying about. Anyway, so Katsuie is in a little bit of trouble. When he realized that Nobutaka and his allies in Ise were being defeated, he decided to try and direct a little bit of attention from this by sending his son down with a small force um, in early springtime when it was just about possible to get at least a small force out of Echizen 
to harass some of Hideyoshi's castles on the northern edge of his uh, sphere of influence. However, as they were arriving and setting up their base in their own castle, uh, Hideyoshi basically bribed this son <laughs> to stop him attacking, and he accepted it. Uh, so Katsuhige's plan to harass Hideyoshi failed, unfortunately. Finish. So things aren't going very well for Katsuhige so far. Although, things aren't that bad. He still has a very highly skilled and trained army which could match Hideyoshi's. And he still personally is a very able general and well-respected Oda retainer, so he's still in a good military and political position to challenge Hideyoshi for rulership of Oda. His plan was that once he could defeat Hideyoshi, or just partially defeat him in battle, a lot of the Oda retainers would switch their allegiance to him, seeing that the young upstart Hideyoshi you was hell, failing in his attempts to there. take power. And because he was in a little bit of a tenuous situation, not having the full respect of the greater body of retainers in Oda clan, Katsuie was betting that this greater body would very easily turn against Hideyoshi if it seemed like Hideyoshi was going to lose. So that was his plan, he didn't even have to completely defeat him, just dishonor him in some way on the battlefield so that he could gain the respect of the rest of the clan and turn everyone on to his point of view uh, that we shouldn't be letting these young upstart generals be making the decisions in the clan. Which really is what all this was about. So Hideyoshi uh, basically decided that Katsuhige was probably going to invade his territory and set up a number of fortifications on his northern border and then sat back and waited for him to do it because he, he didn't have to force the issue because it was Katsuhige's battle to lose. Hideyoshi uh, didn't have to go and defeat him if he didn't want to. Thus the bull was in Katsuhige's court. But Katsuhige himself didn't actually take any action. Instead, he sent one of his key generals, a guy called Sakamuma Morimasa, who was, it's not Sakamuma, Sakuma, sorry, Sakuma Morimasa, who was one of the great generals of the era, and basically his mission was to just capture as many of Hideyoshi's castles on the northern border as he could before Hideyoshi could send an army to reinforce them, and then once this reinforcement army appeared to be approaching, he should abandon the campaign and come back to join Katsuye uh, in Echizen. Meanwhile, Katsuye would start building up more forces, and then afterwards they could combine their two armies and lead a proper campaign against Hideyoshi, and hopefully realize his plan of defeating him in battle. However, not everything went as planned. Oh, here we go. This guy, Kanetsugu Naoi, now makes a reappearance on the on the west side. As I tried to cross this river, he appears with a unit of horse archers behind my lines. Luckily, one of my heavy cavalry units hadn't crossed the river yet, so I split him off Masanori and ordered him to turn around and face the new threat. So his ambush uh, wouldn't be really ruining my plans anytime soon because I could just counter his advance of a single unit with one of my own single units and well, that would be the end of that. So I guess that was the big thing to worry about in this stage and for me, it didn't really cause any problems. Perhaps there are circumstances where it would be very annoying for some horse archers to appear, but in this particular case, it wasn't so bad. Now what was I just saying? Yes, Sakuma was leading a force of Katsuye's troops into the north side of Hideyoshi's territory in the Omi province. And at first he was very success successful, sorry, actually. He captured a number of castles, but there was one castle which uh, really would not fall to him. He was besieging it and they were basically refusing to surrender and his assaults were failing. The castle was called Shizugataki and this would be the site of what would come to be known as the Battle of Shizugataki, uh, which I guess I'll talk about right now. The Battle of Shizugataki occurred because Hideyoshi was doing some sneaky night marches. Oh, before I talk about that, a quick moment to watch my troops be killed by some of Kanetsugu's magical powers, which he apparently has. He is going to be using the ability called Dragon, I think. Make all these geezers erupt out of the ground and <laughs> send my men and horses flying. What a cheeky man, and he was almost dead as well. Can't believe he pulled that little last second attack on me. Damaged Masanori's unit a fair bit. Luckily I have so many troop skills available that I can just heal up. Officer skills, sorry. Everybody follow me! Now what was I about to say? 
I was about to tell you about the Witness battle of Shizugataki, that's right. Hideyoshi was pulling a sneaky plan. He was doing forced night marches of his troops up from central Japan towards Oumi province so that they would arrive before anyone could have predicted and before Sakuma could predict. Now Katsuie was cautious about such a thing okay. happening and kept you ordering Sakuma to, to fall back to Etizen province just in case uh, Hideyoshi should suddenly appear in such a way death. but Sakuma was ignoring him perhaps thinking it wouldn't possibly happen but sure enough in less than half the time everyone expected Hideyoshi's army arrived at Shizugatake and now Sakuma was in trouble because he hadn't prepared for it at all his forces were spread out besieging the castle and he barely had any time to pull them into a defensive position and the small time he did have would prove to be not enough because Hideyoshi's forces just overran him. He was forced into retreat, he was personally captured and I believe later executed, uh, as well as a couple of Katsuye's sons who were also present were executed, and the greater part of his forces uh, were destroyed in the rout, although some of them did make it back to Kenoto Ka sorry, Kitanosho Castle. Um, but those that made it back wouldn't see any more action because Katsuie saw defeat at this stage. He realized he couldn't win and that his battle to overthrow Hideyoshi was never going to succeed. Here's Kagekatsu. Prepare yourself, That's the same voice Nobunaga. actor as Ranmari Mori. Very confusing. It's quite interesting because Kagekatsu was a, a page boy to Kenshin Uesugi uh, just like Ranmari was a page boy to Nobunaga. So maybe Casting the same voice actor for him was a reference to that? I don't know. But anyway, Katsuye realized he was defeated and he decided to commit suicide. Now, Katsuye was married to Oichi, Nobunaga's sister, who we've seen quite a lot in The Legend of Nobunaga. And Oichi had already faced a very simil si similar situation in her marriage to Azai, where once Azai was defeated, he needed to commit suicide and wasn't sure whether Oichi should commit suicide with him. Let no one and escape! Just like as happened then, Katsuye asked Oichi to leave him, to take the children and go, leave him to his death and that Oichi should live on. But Oichi, not wishing to repeat what happened Masai. with Nagamasa Azai, decided that this time I'm going to stay with my husband Fire. and die with him. However, the children were spared for the second time. The children were let out uh, to go on their way. One of them would later uh, marry Hideyoshi, I believe. One must rely on more than but just yes, strength. Oichi this time was doomed to die. Katsuie burned Ketanosho Castle to the ground and I believe he committed suicide in the flaming ruins up. along with Oichi. So it was the end of the short-lived Kitan uh, Kitanosho Castle which I believe only existed for seven or eight years before being destroyed and the end of Katsuie and the end of any serious opposition to Hideyoshi's Hideyo Hideyo rulership of the Oda clan. There would be further stages in the war for succession, but the main contender, which was Katsuie, had now been knocked out. What was that? Hideyoshi had essentially become the de facto shogun, um, and in a few years' time he would gain the titles Finish from the imperial them. court to prove this to the land, but I'll probably talk about that at a later time. So now in the stage, I'm just hitting the final nails into the coffin of Kagikatsu and his remaining forces. I have so many units around, it's sort of inevitable that I'll win, okay. but I do want to try and minimize my casualties in order to keep my score up. <laughs> I did have Kagikatsu uh, under... Uh, Kagikatsu, sorry, I've been saying Kagikatsu the entire time, haven't I? It's Kagikatsu, I see, reading it on the screen. I swear he was called Kagikatsu. No, I, I don't know, maybe it's just in my mind. Um, I'm going to keep calling him Kagikatsu just because that's easier for me. Yes, I had it under silence because I thought he would probably pull out some sort of cheeky move and destroy all my troops. The great and now, <laughs> you see us. that nightmare coming to fruition. Uh, because the silence wore off and now he's using that damned water wave attack, which I keep seeing. And this water wave attack, if you... Uh, Look carefully, it's going to really destroy some of my troops. Katsuye and Toshie lose troops really fast. Um, going down from being nearly full to uh, being at less than half strength in Toshie's case. Maybe even less than half strength in Katsuye's case. So I just desperately need to take out Kagekatsu's unit uh, in order to mitigate the damage. And now I finally do it. We mustn't die needlessly. Off he goes. Fall back. Um, 
Kekikatsu would later serve under Hideyoshi, I believe. That's one of his generals. Celebrate! And he would Victory also be the instigator of the Battle of Sekigahara, which was the battle that allowed Ieyasu Tokugawa to take over command of Japan from Hideyoshi, but I'll probably have an opportunity to talk about that later. Let's check the score. It was just about an S ranking, despite uh, poor uh, time and troops loss scores. And I've got an exciting selection of prizes. Let's see what they are. The Rasetsu armor. I really like the look of that Rasetsu armor, especially with that helmet. Actually. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, rapier swords, a katana unit. Not too interested in the sword units at this stage because I've kind of decided that they suck. Uh, Long Yuan, a ninja weapon. I guess someone might appreciate that. Uh, the Love <laughs> Maidate. I think this is the helmet that uh, Kagekatsu was wearing. I guess the symbol means love. Uh, Waito swords, not very interesting. A sort of foreign sword unit. And the standard selection of levels up. Everyone got one. Ooh, and Takatora learned heal. Very useful. And Wolverine. So we're going to move on and see what happens in the cutscenes with Katsuye and Toshie and then get ready to continue resolving Nobunaga's crisis and seeing which clan we're going to attack next. Good thing we got here just when we did. It was nothing. We could have lasted another ten years or more. I'm the luckiest man alive. I've been blessed with friends like you. Thank you, Katsuye. <laughs> My lord. So much bromance. Kick the to the eye. Your age, you look silly. Come on, stop it. A tearful reunion. So now we have Katsuye and Toshie back in our forces, so I'll be able to use them next time, which is going to be extremely useful because they're uh, my best units. Now that Kicho's gone anyway. I see everyone's here. Let us begin this planning session. Sir! My lord, here's the situation. We never really saw what happened to Kanetsugu Naoe. I guess there was nothing too much to worry about in the end. There was no more surprises from him. Uh, so I guess they just had nothing to write on the conditions, so decided to be threatening with a little beware message. Uh, Kanetsugu was quite an interesting character. He was, he was sort of a man of honor. He would later save Hideyoshi's life indirectly uh, because Hideyoshi was visiting Uesugi at one point for diplomatic meetings over relations between the Oda and Uesugi clans and Hideyoshi came without personal guard which means Uesugi would have a great opportunity to just assassinate him and get rid of one of their key enemies uh, but I think it was Kanetsugi who persuaded them not to do it because the, the dishonor of doing that would outlive all of their lives and disgraced the Usugi clan for all of history so he persuaded them to take the honorable solution and allowed diplomatic negotiations to take place and I guess those negoti negotiations sorry, must have succeeded because the Usugi clan uh, worked in tandem with Hideyoshi's forces from then on uh, with Kakekatsu Usugi taking part in some of Hideyoshi's more far-flung campaigns in the Korean peninsula maybe there'll be an opportunity to talk about those crazy campaigns later so next time uh, I'm thinking we're probably going to be seeing the class at Fuji against the Hojo and Sanada forces. Uh, I think we're teaming up with Ieyasu Tokugawa again for that one. Uh, it's kind of like some historical battles that took place between Hideyoshi and the Hojo uh, around 10 years in the future. So there'll be an opportunity to talk about those and an opportunity to talk about how Hideyoshi actually fought with Ieyasu Tokugawa. Uh, the alliance between Tokugawa and Oda was temporarily broken and they went to war with each other for a short time. Uh, towards the end of the war for succession period so since Tokugawa will be taking part in this battle it might give me a little segue to talk about that just to fill out the story I would like to fill out as much of the story of the wars for succession as I could because it kind of highlights the differences between that and what we're seeing on the screen and how everything goes differently if Nobunaga survives so so far we've seen <laughs> that Kasuye survives and comes back to Oda tearful and very grateful to still be part of the clan Whereas historically he was considering breaking off, breaking off and died as a result of his attempts to do so. So look forward to some action against the Hojo and Sanada armies. The Sanada army has lots of uh, tricks up their sleeve as I recall. They can do things like bringing their troops back from the dead as we saw in the battle against some of the Sanada forces when we destroyed the Takada clan. So we'll see if they have any other tricks like that to pull out 
next time on The Legend of Nobunaga. Have a good time.